Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of TNT Garage and Performance and the introduction of another new project. And I know, I know, I need another project like I need a hole in the head. But there's something I usually ask at the end of every video, but instead I'm going to ask it right here at the beginning. And that's, if you remember growing up riding a vintage, scary as hell rocket with a 440 cubic centimeter twin in between your legs with a Walboro or a Tillotson spitting gas in your face, well, subscribe to the channel and like this video. But we're gonna get into this sled, and if you don't know what it is, I'll let you know what it is right after our intro. So let's get to it. sitting on go ahead and give the video a like right now or comment down below if you don't know what I'm sitting on this is a 1980 Scorpion TK I grew up riding vintage sleds probably from the age of six on up and when I say vintage sleds I'm talking everything uh, me and dad rode anything we, we could get our hands on and he could get running uh, say, uh, what was that, a 70, 73 or 74 auto ski Camaro with a 500 uh, Articat motor in it, the Sprint motor. Uh, let's see, there's an old Skidoo TNT that had the Skidoo engine in it that later got a Rockwell, a 75 Super Stinger that had a Rockwell that blew up that got the TNT motor. Oh, any 600... Uh, Snowjet Astro 440. They're at a, at a pile of other Scorpions. Stings, TK, stuff like that. So this is my all-time favorite vintage sled. Now, what a Scorpion TK is, which TK stands for Trail King, is a evolution of the whip chassis. So in 1975, uh, Scorpion had two basic sleds, they're bigger sleds. They had the Super Stinger, which was a tunnel mounted, either single or twin, that sat right here. Big dopey sled, but also they released their first bulkhead mounted snowmobile, more of a trail sled called the Whip. Whereas in 78, the TK had come out. Now the TK in 78, was still the whip hood, but with being red with a particular set of stripes. And of course, it said TK on the tunnel here with whatever displacement it was, whether 340 or 440. Now, this particular hood design came out in 79, and it was also called the whip TK. It was the same hood with the whip style graphics on it said TK on the tunnel, whip on the hood, and in 80, they changed to this wing design uh, graphics and dropped the whip name altogether. Now, you could get a TKX, and the X was basically a sled with extra options added. You could get a cross-country seat with an extra fuel tank and a bunch of other stuff on these sleds. And like I said, I just there's something about this particular sled. This wedge shape predated... The Indy. This is what made wedge, wedge shapes cool. And being the TK or Trail King, it really, at least for the most part, lived up to its name. Now, there is a lot of quirks with uh, these old Scorpions, particularly uh, the Rockwell JLO motors and the later Cuyuna motors. We'll dig into that once we get under the hood. A couple of things to look at on the outside of the sled that are maybe afterthoughts. 
One in particular is this right here. These sleds originally, when the wedge hood came out in 79, didn't have this vent here. And uh, once we get into the motor stuff, it will explain more about why that's there now because they had to add this after the fact to all these sleds. So that's a little bit of history of where this sled come from. And of course, Scorpion went defunct very early in the 80s. They were bought late in the 70s by Articat. When Articat went bankrupt, whoever went Scorpion. So really cool, cool manufacturer based out of Minnesota. Just, just an awesome, awesome sled, I think. So let's dig into this thing and see what we got under the hood. Now, before I do it, I want to point out that my dad come over yesterday because he's, well, he's basically a legend in snowmobiles to two strokes in general. He was on the team, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but he was on the team that built a four-cylinder Rotax back in the early 90s and set a world record with it. So when he says anything about a snowmobile, I'm inclined to believe him, of course. So let's get under the hood and show you what we got. Well, we're under here. We actually unbolted the hood yesterday because the front hinge is really rusty and uh, didn't really want to move and we don't want to break the hood opening and closing it. So it's just easier to take the hood off. Now, here is the best and the worst part of these later Scorpions is the Cayuna 440. They also made them in a 340 displacement. And these little engines were a powerhouse. These things were uh, right around 50 horse, maybe, well, maybe a couple horsepower less. And in this sled that is under 400 pounds full of fuel, it absolutely flew when it ran. The problem is they didn't always run, especially once they got some age on them and things like that. So one difference between the Cayuna motor in a TK as opposed to a whip is the Cayuna in the TK has a Makuni power jet carb. It's a round slide carb. I greatly prefer the Makunis over everything else. The whip had the Walboro WF carb that had a float bowl on it, which was actually a really good butterfly carb, but they figured the TK, uh, the, the Makuni was just better. So that's, that's one good part about this engine. Now getting into why that vent is in the hood and why it was an afterthought was the common problem with these engines is they got hot. They got really, really hot. And the reason for that is Scorpion, when the Rockwell JLO motor was developed, which is, this is basically a clone of that being a Cayuna, it was the same design, but different head bolts, all that stuff. But the problem is, when you think of a fan-cooled engine, especially you know, in a two-stroke snowmobile application, most of them, like your Articats, your Skidoos, your Polarises, you know, your Sacks, all that stuff, have a metal shroud that goes over the engine to a fan housing that forces air through, and there's big exposed fins if you take that shroud off. You don't see that on this engine because all the fins go through the cylinder heads here. This is open underneath this casting with a lot of fins. The problem with that is when it's this enclosed, one, there's not a whole lot of space for airflow. So by the time the air gets through the mag side or the, the uh, recoil side, of the engine into the PTO side or the clutch side is the air is incredibly hot, which gets the PTO cylinder really hot. And then the crank seal fails, it begins to suck air and it melts down, which like I said, these engines absolutely flew when they ran. And if you got used to the speed of this sled and it got faster one day, it's about to blow up because it's pulling air and going lean. So. Uh, Scorpion tried to rectify a lot of those problems by putting this piece of cowling in to the vent. That way the air could flow straight through and out of the hood because Scorpion in the earlier years thought 
well, why do we need to let all the hot air out so it all just stayed under the hood and didn't circulate so the engine got even hotter? So that's why this is here. They tried to circumvent it. It helped, but these engines are still fairly known for burning up the PTO side. Now, I'm not saying you can't make a Cayuna engine work. It's just the fact that it takes a lot of work, a lot of knowledge in order to get them to work. A lot of guys will pull this head off, take out every other fin to promote more airflow. Uh, there's other things you can do. Getting the timing right on these things is a bear. So this, this engine seems all right. We're going to go through it. Uh, I've already pulled the plugs and looked in the cylinders and there's plenty of carbon in there. It's not like it was running lean. There's no scorch marks, nothing like that. And it seems to have decent compression. So that being said, let's pull the plugs out and uh, we're going to test for spark first because these engines, Scorpion was one of the last manufacturers to have a magneto point style ignition uh, all the way up to the end, except in 1980, the Sting, when they redesigned it, that ugly orange one, those had CDI ignition, uh, but the TKs did not. They kept the magneto point style ignition, which you get dirty, you know, you got to go in and clean the points, which requires pulling the recoil off, getting the flywheel off, and getting in there. And I don't know how deep I want to dig into this, mainly because... This sled is going to be something putts around with and all that. And I really don't want to have to work on it or rebuild it all the time. But we'll have a look here. Now, one thing to note before I pull these plugs out is you can see everything is here and accounted for on this sled. This is a 100% uh, original. It says 1,100 miles on the speedometer. And even though there's a couple things I'll show you later that shows a lot of wear... Everything else on this sled leaves me inclined to believe it's actually 1,100 miles. So, let's go ahead and pull these plugs out. I already had them loose, and like I said, uh, Dad came over yesterday. We did a full assessment on the sled to see what we're going to need. So now I'm just relaying it that, that to you guys. Now, the plugs actually look pretty decent. I don't know how well you could see those. They're not terrible. You run a pretty good mixture. You could smell the fuel on it. To me, it smells like burnt uh, leaded race fuel. So someone cared enough about this to put at least proper fuel in it. That being uh, something without ethanol. And I mean, running, running 110 in it, it's going to be just fine. These had 12 to 12 and a half to one compression, which would run fine on 91, 93, uh, just as long as there wasn't any ethanol in it. So we got the plugs out. They look good. We're going to set them to the side and we're going to see how easy it rolls over without the plugs in. There shouldn't be really any clunks or rattles or knocks or anything like that. So we're going to go over here. I pull the rope. It sounds pretty good. It plugs out. So if we stick our finger in, if I can do this. Oh yeah. It's got good compression from the finger test. And looking down at the pistons, like I said, there's uh, no scoring, no burning. Uh, there's carbon on top of the piston, which means it was running a little rich. But in the case of a Cayuna, I'd rather run it rich and run it lean. Because you run it lean, it gets hotter. Getting hotter melts down the PTO side. So, that's all very good things about these. And don't mind the pipe being disconnected. I disconnected that yesterday. The next thing to test for is spark. So we're going to stick our old NGKs in here and I'm going to stick them down on the intake, orient them so I can 
see the electrode, at least one of them, to see if we have spark. And since this sled doesn't have a key, the kill switch is missing, and there's a weird toggle switch that I don't know what it's for. It's like the only modification to the sled that I've seen. Uh, on these older points style ignitions, there is a plug. If I can dig it out, I'm actually gonna remove the air box here, seeing as it's loose. Get you guys in here. Make sure you can see. So there is the main plug coming from the engine. So like I said, on the older Magneto points style engines, these Kayunas are an open loop system. So if you unplug the main harness to the engine, you it will allow a spark and it will run. You just can't shut it off. On the later CDI or the 80 uh, Sting CDIs, it's a closed loop. You have to have it hooked up in order for it to run. But on these older ones, you unplug it, they'll run. You just got to pull the plug wires to shut it off. So let's see if we got spark. Not seeing any spark on that one. plug out of there so we don't rip it into recoil and I'm not seeing anything so I'm gonna grab probably if I can find my test leads I'm actually gonna run a proper ground maybe that's our issue well properly grounding the plugs didn't work and I've tried other plugs so this has no spark which means our points are dirty now I'm not too keen. Um, it's simple enough to pull the recoil, but then you got to get the fan belt off. You got to pull the flywheel off and get to the points. Now, if you guys would like to see me go in and clean the points and all that and get this engine running, see how it sounds, go ahead and comment that you want to see this get going. But for now, I'm going to leave it be. It we know it's a good engine otherwise. Everything sounds good. When we have the plugs in it, it sounds you know great coming over. It's got a nice thunk thunk when you're pulling a recoil. And everything is complete under here. Uh, the pulse line is for the fuel pump going from the crankcase to the fuel pump. So if we do fire it up, there's no worries of that pulling air and running it lean. The only thing is the primer lines are rotted off from the primer to the intake, which we could just cap those. But even though this sat, the car moves freely. This cap comes right off, no problem. The slide moves freely. Everything is really nice under here. Uh, we'll get you down in here and look at it, show you that the bulkhead's in great shape. Everything you'd expect on an old vintage sled to be beat to death is incredible shape on this sled. So I'll get you down in here and we'll kind of inspect under the hood area. Okay, getting you down in here, you can see that the bulkhead is in great shape. There's no cracks, no broken welds, nothing like that. The clutch is free, obviously, because we were turning it over, it didn't try moving the track or anything. The secondary is stuck just a little bit open you could see that but that's probably needs uh needs a good going through a, a rebuild on a secondary which is not a big deal on these uh chain case isn't leaking there's not grease all around the inside of the drum the shoe material still there and this primary seems fine and also too these uh scorpion power thrust Clutches were awesome. Actually, everything on these tunnel mounted or uh, bulkhead mounted sleds, belly mounted, were really good. The chain cases were good. The clutches were good. And on the TKs, the drivers were good. A lot better than the other Scorpion models, the earlier ones, where drivers were pretty weak. They crack and fall apart. But these have uh, metal rods inside the like nylon drivers so they held up incredibly well so you could see 
that everything is still there. And you can tell a Makuni power jet by this line right here that comes from up by the mouth of the carburetor and goes to the float bowl. That's a power jet carb. So the ones that don't have that, it's just your basic Makuni. And uh, that's, that's an easy way to tell the difference. There's no, you know, you got a little bit of kind of oily, fuely stuff leaking down here, which is expected out of the exhaust manifold. But all in all, it looks really good. And this is what I'm talking about with the fins, how the airflow comes through these engines and why it's such a problem when you don't have proper airflow coming in and then going out. So everything under here looks really good. The belly pan is in tremendous shape uh, down here. The, and you can tell that it wasn't bounced off anything. It's not busted underneath. The only, only issue with the belly pan, let me move that out of the way, is right here. And that is pretty simple. <laughs> That's not like the slide getting beat or slammed around. It's when you're riding these and you're pulling a hard corner, you got your foot not all the way on here, you push, your foot's gonna go right through the belly like that. So that'll take a little bit to repair, but nothing too terrible. Now, continuing to go around this sled, like I said, 1,100 miles on the Speedo, and these are the original gauges to the sled. The earlier, when they were still Rockwell JLO, they said Scorpion, in the gauges and these, you could see Kayuna. So, uh, choke spree. It's got nasty fuel in there, which we'll dump out. But we'll continue coming around the sled. And the seat, the foam feels great. You can see that the staples came out of the wood. It can use a new piece of wood under the seat. There's a couple small tears, which is fine. It's... It's serviceable right now, but the tunnel is in tremendous shape, other than right back there. We'll talk about that in a second, but there's no dents. It's not bent. It's not beat up. Everything looks good there. Now, as far as this, it looks like someone tried pulling the sled backwards and tore the tunnel where the rear bumper attaches. Not a big deal. I have friends that have TIG welders. We can fix that. The main points on these tunnels that you want to make sure in good shape is where the rear suspension mounts. There's a plate riveted in here that the rear arm of the suspension bolts to. And then in the front arm of the suspension goes down right behind the chain case on this side. And of course, corresponding on the other side. As far as the track, it seems to be in pretty good shape. They're supposed to have that little kind of threadbare look. That's kind of how they were, but it's pliable. It's not ripped. It's not cracked. So this is most likely a true 1,100-mile sled. Just, well, I won't say neglected because I'll show you why I think this was taken care of. Someone really loved this sled. The hood, save for a little spot there and a little spot down at the nose is in phenomenal shape. Now you could see that someone cared and kind of, you know, did a little upkeep to this hood. You sharp-eyed scorpion guys will know right away what's different. And if you do, comment. So, I'll give you a second, a little longer. You Scorpion guys know what's different here. All right, time's up. This isn't supposed to be black. Uh, on the earlier ones, on the 79s, they had two panels here. One said Scorpion, and then they had another one, and they were both black. But in 80, this was red, where it said Scorpion. So someone did that, and they also took the time to re-pinstripe around this winged decal. So someone really, really, really loved this sled, and it was last registered to be on the trail in 95. So that's been sitting for 
Oh, crap. I got to do math now. What is that? 29 years? 29. Yeah. If I'm wrong, let me know because I usually am. But the underside of the hood is in great shape. Everything's all there. The wiring. So that's awesome. That's the part between that, the belly pan, and the tunnel. That's really all I care about with this sled. So... I mean, like I said, if you want to see me get that Cuyuna running and pull all that crap apart, get the points cleaned up, get this thing popping off, let me know in the comments. But before we move on to what my plans are with this sled, we're going to talk about the rear suspension, and I got to go outside and get it. So you know this is going to be good. All right, we're on the rear suspension. And when I got the sled, this was in the, inside the tunnel. But we decided to pull it out because we noticed some things that were quite wrong with it. And I'll show you those before I explain uh, just what these suspensions are about and actually how they're quite good. So what happened is you got your two wheels, your two big bogey wheels on the rear axle and the bearings must have went out because that is not how those are supposed to look. So when we initially looked at it, we thought, oh, it's got way more than 1,100 miles on it. And then we sat there and thought about it. It's like maybe this sled sat for a long, long time and the bearing seized up. Someone went out and rode the bananas out of it and it just destroyed the two rear wheels. And you can see one bearing, which actually still turns, is on there. And the other one, the inner race is completely gone. But the axle itself is actually in good shape, as well as these adjusters on the back. Now, the other part on these that causes a lot of issues, especially during disassembly if you're trying to fix it, is this rear swing arm, which shock mounts in there, and these bolt in the back of the tunnel where I showed you. And what it does is there's a shaft in here that's supposed to freely spin that rides in the tunnel. And then these capture your rear bogey wheels on the rear axle. And these springs are what give you your suspension as well as on the front. Now, a lot of times what happens is one, this shaft, which is aluminum, seizes inside of the, the steel rod, the steel pipe, and these end plates seize right to this cross shaft here, which is why this one, it was bent anyway, I ended up cutting off so I could remove the rear section of the suspension. Now, does that mean this suspension is a complete bust? No, this is saveable. Uh, there's quite a few bogies that are still good. There's some that have bad bearings, but you can still get bogey wheels. That's not a big deal. The hardest ones are the ones in the center here. You probably got to cut the shaft and easy enough to make new center shafts. It's not a big deal. The good thing on this suspension is in the front, it's the same setup as the rear essentially. You've got a cross shaft that <coughs> turns inside the main shaft and you got springs going down to your front set of bogies. This is all free, which is great. The shaft turns, at least inside of these outer pipes. This one's seized, but we can cut that and replace it. Not a big deal. But, <coughs> all in all, the suspension is saveable. And when I was saying this is actually a really good suspension, uh, especially back in the late 70s and 80s, and even before, this is the Scorpion para rail suspension this is their bogey wheel suspension so you can see there's no high facts on here it's all bogey wheels which gave you a great benefit if you're riding in less than ideal snow conditions you can ride all day and not hurt anything whereas if you're riding in low snow with high facts you're going to burn them right off so this was actually really good it worked great as long as it didn't seize up if you took it apart, lubed it every year or two, you're fine. And they really, really stood up. 
Now, Scorpion did offer a high fax style skid, which was a pair of slide. They offered two, two different ones, I think. And uh, also a really good suspension. But this is definitely the one to have, uh, especially with a sled like this, that it's not like I'm gonna go trail riding with it or anything like that, or go on super long rides. It's gonna be a putz around, go to vintage shows, stuff like that. If we can keep a track together, you know, maybe do a grass drag or two or a radar run in the vintage class, but this will work fine. We can get replacement parts for it, whether it be used or new. Uh, so that is really quite good. So there we go. That's the long and the short of this sled. The skis are in great shape, even though just like all the other ones, people painted them black because they're originally uh, galvanized from the factory so they had that galvanized kind of silver look to them and they rusted right away so it wasn't very good galvanization so all that being said let's uh well let's get to the part where i reveal my plans for this particular sled and uh let you know what to look forward to well all right that's the basic overview of this sled why i love it so much and just like when my son had once mentioned to me that the old square body was his favorite vehicle I ever owned, it's like, you know, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna give it to him, we're gonna build it and all that. That's kind of how this is with me. This is a tremendous part of my childhood. Vintage sleds in general, but the TK, I always lost it after. And it's something that I wanted one for myself and it's going to be a project that both me and my dad work on because we both have a huge heart for these old sleds. So, getting past the lovey-dovey stuff, what are my plans with this? Well, purists might not like it, even though, don't worry, I'm not going to like cut it up. Uh, there's a lot of restored or beautiful TKs out there. My dad had quite a few. He actually had a TKX cross country with the rear tank and all that, just a gorgeous sled. And a couple other TKs that were really, really nice original sleds. And one that we kind of rest them on it a little bit, different paint on hood, stuff like that. So my plan with this sled is to build a resto mod. But me being me, I want to build a muscle sled. So. Here's what the plan is, and I'm not going to reveal like all the intricacies. I want you guys to stay tuned for that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to lay down a killer paint job on the hood and the belly of this sled. Now, don't worry. I'm going to keep it as true to the original as I possibly can, which means we're going to have the stock style graphics on it and things like that, but the paint job, at least is what I've got in my head, will blow you away once it's done. And it'll kind of bleed into the heritage of Scorpion snowmobiles a little bit. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing as slammed as we can, really make it look like an old ice drag, grass drag sled. So we're gonna spread the skis, we're going to get the stance wider and get different leaf springs to get it down, which means we're not gonna go over moguls with it, but that's not the plan. So that's gonna be the front end setup of this sled. And in the rear, we're gonna rebuild the stock suspension, make it good, make it right, make it nice. Uh, I plan on recovering the seat. And again, I'm gonna go into the uh, portfolio of vintage Scorpions and pay homage to some of the very first, like the, the Mark Ones, the original Stingers, all that stuff when I go to recover this seat. Underneath it, we're gonna polish the tunnel to a brilliant mirror finish and uh, obviously replace these decals with factory originals to keep the TK on the tunnel. Now, the last part of this sled is under the hood. I'm probably not gonna keep the Cayuna. Like I said, I want this to be fairly trouble free and not that you can't make a Cayuna run great and run forever and all that stuff. It's just not worth it to me 
if I'm not building a 100% restored sled. So I want this thing to be functional, something I don't have to dink with. So we're thinking, seeing as they're everywhere, is either find a Yamaha 440 SS or a 540 SRV and swapping that in. Now, we do know that there's going to be some hood clearance issues because the Cuyuna is such a small package versus any other fan-cooled sled. So we will figure out how to get it in here without cutting a hole in the hood and probably tilting the motor much like newer sleds are heavily tilted and get it under there, make it a nice package. And if we do the 540, we'll have a little more power, we'll have tons of reliability. If we do the SS440, similar power, same great reliability. And uh, it's just, just one of those things that a lot of guys go, oh, you gotta keep the Cayuna. I know, I know, I love these motors. When they run, they rip. But this isn't gonna be something that's, you know, gonna go to, is there a Pebble Beach for snowmobiles? I don't know, but that's not gonna happen. So that's the overall plan, and of course, the name of this project, because there's the TK, of course, and then they made the TKX. And I'm thinking, you know, we got to go one better than that, right? So this is forever known as the Project TKZ. So once we get her all done, you'll see that that name will actually fit this sled quite well. And we're not going to ruin the heritage of it. We're not going to cut anything up. We're going to keep it uh, at least as form original, other than paint and widening the front stance, stuff like that. And, of course, we're going to train the power train. So... Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this little dive into this new project, and unfortunately, it doesn't run right now, but if you'd like to see it run, like I've said at least two other times in the video, I repeat myself, but if you want to see us work on this and see if we can get those points clean and get Spark back, get it running, let me know in the comments. So, like I said, uh, stay tuned. This is going to be a fun one. Obviously, it won't be real heavy work for a couple of months. I got Power Tour and Iola and all that. Of course, the checker to do a ton more work on. But we will be getting to this sled within a few months. And really, I'd like to unveil it for winter. So stay tuned for that. And of course, like, share, subscribe, comment down below. You can find me at on Facebook at TNT Garage and Performance and also on Instagram at TNT Garage and Performance. And don't forget, every project I have on this channel has a playlist. So if you want to jump in there and check out certain parts or see it from beginning to end, go ahead to my playlist and you'll see everything there, including the checker, the ultimate average muscle car, uh, daily driver, brute bar, stuff like that. And of course, project TKZ is getting its own playlist once we get some more videos. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, remember, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you soon.